Hello and welcome to the Leathercraft Masterclass and in this video I'm going to be attempting to stitch left-handed. Now I get a few emails, I'm going to say a few, quite a few emails from left-handed individuals who want to stitch left-handed versus right-handed. So they're asking me how they can adapt the stitch so that they can do the same thing in a mirror image. Well, I've always thought that right-handed and left-handed stitching isn't really a thing. I don't believe it exists. Pretty much like there isn't any left-handed piano. It's a dance between both hands equally. And stitching is no different because you're using two needles and two hands and they both get the same amount of use. So why then do people feel the need to switch to a left-handed side? Well, if my theory holds, it should be no trouble for a right-handed individual to stitch left-handed. Confused? So am I. Let's try it out. So to begin this test, I'm going to take a piece of undyed vegetable tan leather, also called saddle leather, russet, various other names, but undyed, untreated vegetable tan leather, very firm. This piece happens to be 3.5 millimeters thick exactly. So three and a half millimeters thick, good thick piece. I recommend if you're a beginner, this is the ideal leather to learn on because it takes away a lot of variables and it holds together nice and stiff so that if you're making mistakes in your stitching, you can find out here rather than try and use a more challenging leather and have a lot more variables that you need to overcome to figure out what's going wrong if you're making mistakes. This is a good blank canvas to start with. So 2.5 millimeters to three and a half millimeters, if you're a beginner, is really good just to hone your skills before you then challenge them with thinner leathers, uh, leathers with heavier textures, softer leathers, and things like that. So all those things add variables to your stitching, which can throw it off. With this, if you're making mistakes, you can find out much quicker what they are and how to rectify them before moving on to more advanced leathers, I guess you could call them. Now, to stitch right-handed, we use a traditional obverse iron, okay? So an obverse iron, like this J. Dixon iron. So this is an obverse iron, and you can see the teeth are going this way, okay? So they're going that way all the way along. Taking another J. Dixon iron, this iron happens to be a number five, the marks are going the other way, okay? So they're going this way. Now the idea behind these irons, now these are sometimes called inverse irons, also called reverse irons, uh, also called portmanteau irons, but from here on in we'll call them uh, reverse irons. The reason these exist are for specialist applications. They're not really for stitching left-handed, okay? So therefore when you want to say, mark one side with a reverse and then mark another piece of leather with an obverse and when you pair them up, they're opposite like this, but they match each other like this. So going through thick leather, you can actually find the mark on the other side with the awl and it gives you a neater stitch. Okay, so good tip for you guys if you wanna stitch through thick, heavy leathers. Another use is if you're box stitching and you have two pieces at a 45 degree angle, well, the marks now match each other going along. So when you stitch, you have a nice decorative angle going through. Now, there are a few other reasons reverse irons exist, but those are gonna be the main ones. But for this test, okay, because I'm stitching everything in a mirror image, I need an iron that is a mirror image. So I'm gonna use this reverse iron. So I'm gonna take some wing dividers and I'm gonna mark my leather from one side to the other. And I'm just gonna place my pricking iron on the edge there.
just to give you guys an example, if I take a, a pricking iron, this is an obverse, a standard one that most of you are using. You'll see that they're opposing each other. So this is obverse and this is reverse at the top. Now, if you don't have a reverse pricking iron, but you want marks in your leather that look like this, I can take the same obverse pricking iron that made this mark here. And if I turn it over and go all the way through the leather to the other side, very difficult to see here, so I'll open it up with an awl. Just a round or so you can guys can actually see where the marks are. So you can now see, although I've made a bit of a hash with it with this, but you can now see that penetrating from the rear side going all the way through actually reverses these marks. Okay, so a rather crude example perhaps. But that's one way if you want to get these marks. If you penetrate through the wrong side, you will end up with opposite angles. So I'm going to do another row of marks up here just to save the confusion. And then we're going to take it to the stitching pony and we're going to give it a stitch. So here we are with our stitching pony. Now this little clamp is actually a tabletop clamp uh, by Dream Factory who actually supplied this free of charge for me uh, as a gift. So I'm using it in this course. But I have to say it is an extremely handy piece of kit to have. Normally I stitch using a clam or French stitching clams, English stitching clams, etc. But sometimes when you want something perfectly upright, recently I did a trunk handle with this so it does stand up to a lot of abuse, so I do recommend it. So, taking our leather, and this is the seam that we're actually paying attention to here. What I've done, because I've used a pricking iron, I'm not going through the leather with it, I'm just marking the surface. So I've taken an awl, and the first dozen or so, I've actually gone through with the awl, so that I don't have to use the awl. Now, this is the main left-handed, right-handed variable. Because it's a tool, when you're stitching with this in your right hand, okay, and this is my right hand here, I've actually flipped this on the editing program, so you're looking at this as if you're me, okay? So today, you are me, very lucky. Today, <laughs> you're me, and you're looking at this right hand, left hand, okay? So it's as if you're stitching this. To begin this stitch, I'm gonna focus on not using the awl. And then I'm gonna try using the awl, but this time in my left hand. So we're gonna see whether or not a right-handed individual can simply switch sides. So starting with this, and it's gonna be on this side that it needs to face, because normally it's facing this way. But this time we're having to switch it over. Everything's a mirror image, which is weird. I'm not gonna lie, this already feels odd. Okay, I'm not gonna do any back stitches to begin with. I'm just gonna go straight into the stitch. And just to give me a check there, I'm just gonna mark the last one where I need to start using all. So thread-wise, uh, 004 needles, uh, 0.55 millimeter thread. This is just regular polyester thread, nothing special. And I've done it in black so that you guys can actually see what's going on a little bit better. I wouldn't normally choose black on tan, but there we go. Right, so already I'm thinking about using my right hand to go through there. Uh, well, I suppose you could. Doesn't really matter on the first stitch, so leveling up. All right, so normally I'm starting with my left, so I'd have to be starting with the right. So the right needle goes through there, coming underneath into a T, turning over, going back in, and then instead of pulling this way, I'm pulling this way. So up right. Okay, see if I can remember that. All right, already I'm trying with my left. This is odd. It does feel a bit weird, but it's doable. Yeah, I'm having to remember which direction. I keep meaning to slip up. <laughs> So it is doable. It doesn't feel, so far it doesn't feel too, we're caught there. 
doesn't feel too bad. I'm having to think about it, which I guess uh, psychologists will call conscious competence, where you're able to do it, but you have to think about it constantly. It's not natural yet. Starting to get a bit more of a rhythm going. It's not too bad. So it is starting to feel a bit more natural in these stitches. I reckon if I'd stitched in like a, a belt all the way around the edge or something like this, then by the end of it, I'd probably be quite competent with it. Okay, so this is our last stitch before needing to use the awl, okay? So there's no cast, so there should be one side that's straight and one side that's slightly angled. So if we take this out the clams, let's double check. Yeah, so straight edges, okay, or straight edges, straight stitching on one side and flipping on the other side. We've got a little bit of an angle going on there, so as I would expect. This iron that I'm using here doesn't provide the most extreme angle, I'll tell you that now, but it's the only large reverse iron that I have, so you'll have to bear with me. Right, okay, so this, I'm gonna have to change the orientation of, so yeah, I guess you would have to have a left-handed awl if you don't have a collet. So I'm gonna undo the locking nut, rotate it. And for your information guys, if you're interested in making this all, I actually made it and it's on my blog. So if you visit my website, leathercraftmasterclass.com uh, and then check out the blog, you'll see how I made the all blade and the collet system here. So holding it how I'd naturally do it, I'm gonna do the locking nut up. And now that's set. So handy having that actually. Didn't even think about that. Right, so this is gonna be interesting. So the awl blade is in my left hand. All right, let's give this a go. Already feels weird. All right, maybe this, maybe this is where my theory slips up. So that's gonna go in there. Right needle comes underneath, pull through, pulling in and then stitching. Oh, not too bad. Switching. Okay, so it, <laughs> the orientation of the awl is moving around a little bit in my hand, so that's gonna need a bit of, a bit of practice. So it is a bit more challenging when using an awl, but it is possible. I think if you're a left-handed individual and you're learning how to stitch, there should be no reason why you um, don't stitch with the awl in your right hand. I don't think it requires a massive amount of dexterity like uh, painting or drawing or writing or throwing darts or something like that where you just, you know, your, your non-dominant hand is pretty useless. Kind of plowing through there, it's not quite in the right position in my hand, but we'll make it work. So yes, uh, adding the awl blade definitely, or adding the awl definitely makes it a bit harder it tends to want to move around in my hand as I'm adjusting. So you can see the needle there between my fingers ready for action. As I switch and use my finger and thumb to hold the needle and switch over, it does cause the awl to rotate in my hand. I'm not sure what I do with my, my right hand that counteracts that. I guess it would just be practice. So. So far, it seems to be okay. So let's add another variable now. So let's make it even harder. Let's try doing a cast. So I'm gonna take my, I'm gonna take my, my right-handed pen. <laughs> and uh, so there was a cut off there. And now what we're gonna do, and just to remind myself, I'm gonna put cast, C-A-S-T, on that side. So I'm going to push through as normal. Shouldn't switch hands, I should just try it. And I'm casting, so I'm bringing my thread over. And pulling through. So I'm not going to use my right hand to help move the all around anymore. And so same again, casting over. And pulling up. And yeah, we've got a little bit more of an angle going on there now. And instead of 
kind of overtly throwing the stitch over, I'm just going to lift the thread up and then grab the needle from underneath. That's what I normally do when I stitch uh, with a cast. It makes no difference, but it's the whole step of manually grabbing the thread and putting it over the needle does uh, tend to use up a bit of time. So I'll do a couple more stitches and then just for a laugh, I'm going to try a back stitch. See what happens, no idea. I might just undo it. <laughs> So one more stitch. Now I can put the all down. Yep. Yep. Tuck that underneath. Yeah, that doesn't seem to pose a problem. So yeah, as I mentioned before, this pricking iron doesn't give the most extreme angles, but um, you can see a bit more angle on the casted one there, and all these are uncasted. So this section uh, I pierced all the way through prior to stitching. This I was using an awl whilst stitching. This using an awl whilst stitching, but adding a cast in there as well. And it all looks kind of the same. Let's give that a tap down. Yeah, so um, I kind of, I still feel that the theory of there's no such thing as a right-handed or left-handed stitching process, I think, that, I think that still holds true. If you're left-handed, stitch the same way as you see most people stitching. I think if you're learning from scratch, I mean, my brain has been trained for many years to do the all process with my right hand. I start with the left and, every, and everything, you know, the skill is in... in the skill is different. It's, uh, it's it's difficult to explain, but I've been trained. I've trained my brain one way for so long that it makes it a challenge to do this. But it, I'm still able to do it. I think if you're an absolute beginner, you're left-handed. I don't think you need to do a mirror image of everybody else. I still feel, even though you're left-handed, you should have this in your right hand. If I'd have started to learn stitching. Um, the method, the way that I've just done everything in reverse, I think I would have no handicap at all. There will be no difficulty in learning how to stitch properly. So I hope that has been informative for you guys, a little bit confusing maybe for some of you. Um, for a lot of you, it might not apply, but it's just interesting to watch. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the online video courses at leathercraftmasterclass.com and see what we can do for you. I'll see you there.